Hi there, everybody, and welcome back to the Top Coat 1.5 training videos. In this video, we're going to be talking about the bumps, blurs, and masks. So, uh, we've got a file already loaded. I've got a Grayscale Gorilla HDRI Studio installed, so we have something to reflect, and I've got a model. So, let's just start with a nice new material here. Why don't we do gloss? So, you got a nice glossy material. I'm going to apply it to the overall coffee pot, and let's start talking about bumps. So bumps are pretty straightforward. We've got all these different bumps to choose from, and we just click on any of them. So why don't we try Layers 2? So I click on Layers 2, hit the quick Command R for render, and there we go. We've got a nice, messy, bumped-up object. We've got this uh, procedural mathematical noise passing through the object and creating a nice, deep bump all over the place. We can click on any of these layers and get lots of different looks. We can click on Lizard and get something maybe a little bit leathery-looking. Ooh, very creepy. Look at that. And then we can click on uh, really any of these. We can click on Crystallize, uh, which is just kind of a weird abstract one. I've never actually used this one, but, you know, makes it all kind of crystalline. Uh, we got dents and dings and dirt and all sorts of, uh, we got like this clay kind of smudged up look. Um, so it's kind of like fingerprints and a little bit messy bunch of different ones. I'm going to click on dense because it's a nice blatant one. We can see the example really, really easily. So uh, right away when I hit uh, render on here, you're going to see that we have these nice, uh, let me put a different HDRI studio in. Um, let's do a botanical garden. I like that one. So now you can see that we've got these nice dents throughout the entire surface. Uh, now, if we go into our modifiers tab, we can change these. So right now, you can see we have a bump depth of 30. I think all of them have a default of 30. Um, and we can crank that up, and we can make the bump, obviously, a lot deeper. So now these are quite deep. Or we can go very subtle with it, go to like 2%. And now we're just getting like the slightest hint that there's a little bit of depth to those. Very neat. Um, jump this back up to maybe that medium 30% range. Uh, and now we've got noise scale, and this gives you nice accurate feedback as to the scale of the noise here. The noise, um, in this case, being bump, but also noise is also the blurs and masks. I'm going to jump these down to 25% and the noise scale, and now you can see we get these tiny, tiny little dents in here. It's kind of all, I don't even know what, you know, more like a pebble or a piece of metal we're zoomed out on or something. Uh, or you can scale it way up. I can jump this up to 200%. And now they're nice and big. We can go up to 500%, and they're going to be huge, big old lines adding in this modification. Um, so the bumps are actually pretty straightforward. Um, let's go to any of them. We actually do have a nice leather here, a subtle noise. We've got this big overall noise, uh, which just breaks up these patterns a little bit. So that might be a little strong by default, but we could throw you know this down to like 5%. And that just breaks up that pattern a little bit, not quite so even, like little wavy imperfections instead of these being straight lines. Um, so that all works really well. But then I guess I should have done this in a, sec a second ago. But inside of our bump, if we do something like dense, we have a really neat button down here called invert bump. And if I click on that, then these go from dings in to dings out, which starts maybe looking a little bit cellular, where these feel like they're pushing out from the surface instead of in, depending on the angle we're catching them at. Yeah, so see, these are peeking out, and the highlights here in the middle. Um, and we can crank that to really see the effect. Yeah, that gets crazy. So we get all these little guys bulging outward. Um... So yeah, so those uh, so inverting that super useful. Now let's move into our blur channel. Uh, let's we'll start again from scratch. Let's create a lacquer so we can see the blurs really clearly. So the blurs are things like applying fingerprints or grease or smudges or frost onto the surface. Um, so we're kind of messing up the surface, but not via a bump. So we got lots of different types of fingerprints here. So I've got fingerprints one. So these are just a bunch of, you know, little fingerprints, like a little fingerprint here or there. Just, uh, just someone's been touching it, and then maybe they shouldn't have been. And then it kind of has you go up more and more fingerprints, fingerprints three, fingerprints four, fingerprints five. There starts being a lot of fingerprints where they start getting uh, more and more messed up, where this is getting really, really, you know, messed with a lot. All the, all the way to the point where you start getting to, like, smudges, where it's like, okay, this is just getting full-on messy um, and gross-looking. And then we got a bunch of different ones. Uh, we got some splatters, scratches. We got this frost I like the look of. It looks like maybe this was a window and it's starting to freeze over a little bit. 
so so that works well. Um, now that we've got, and then if you want to get rid of your blur, you can click on none. But now we can go into our modifiers tab, and we can modify the way that these look via, well, first of all, our noise scale. So I can like double up the noise scale. And now these are twice as big. Now we get these big old spots where we can go to be half the size. And now they're going to be nice and tiny. So let's look at the main settings, though, which are going to be our high blur clamp and our low blur clamp. And each one is kind of a dual setting. So one is where is this clamping, and the other is how much is it clamping. So like right here is low blur, so that means black. The black means no blur, very shiny. And then high blur means white, lots of, sh uh, lots of blur. Um, so let's say that we want this to be all frosted over, but the base material, like right now it looks like glass, but let's say the base material is a little bit blurry. So we can grab this black and then pull it up just a little bit. And then what we've done is told it when we render, that that base material on the bottom isn't perfectly shiny. It's a little bit blurry. So you see, you know, a little bit of blur, and it gets a lot more blurry. We can pull that back down to black. We do the same thing on white. Like, right now, it's getting very blurry, but we can say, you know what? Like, maybe pull back on that a little bit. It's not going to go up to maximum blur, just a little bit. So now it's at half the amount, so it's not going quite so crazy. Uh, undo that. Now we also can clamp these in. So I could say, you know what? I want more of let's say I want like I want the uh, high blur like lots of blur to have a lot more of it so I can start clamping it in so as I pull it in further and further and further you see that we're getting less and less of our shininess and more of a solid maximum blur so you see that's just maxed out all of the blur uh, and we can of course do the opposite where we start pulling in our low blur and now we're just getting these little hints of the of the blurriest points and we can even take these and really clamp them in together tightly. So now we've we've really cranked up the contrast pretty much to maximum. So we're just getting we, we've lost all, all the subtlety. Um, th this will be more important in a second when we talk about another part. But I want to move on to masks. Um, so uh, mask allows you to see through one layer to the layer underneath it. So let's go ahead and set that up real quick. I'm going to create a base layer. And I'm going to create a chrome layer. Now, by default, we have it set to add, which always makes everything look a little bit more blinged out. But if we set this to normal, then that means we are not seeing through it. The chrome has no Fresnel, so we cannot see through it. Um, so we could see through it by adding Fresnel or by making this layer partially transparent so we see through the layer underneath. And why don't we make this a nice bright yellow so we can see when we are seeing underneath. Um, and even let's add in some blur. Why not? So we got a slightly blurry chrome. So now I've got my Chrome selected. I'm going to go into Masks, and we can add in different masks here. So let's add in Sticker Residue. So what we've done is I've erased out everything except for where the white is. So now when I render, you can see that we're seeing straight through this shiny, this shiny kind of Chrome uh, to the layer underneath it via the mask. Now we can invert the mask by going to our modifiers and saying uh, Invert Mask right there. So it's going to flip it around so we see lots of shiny. And then now we're just seeing some slight holes down into where we're seeing underneath it. And so we got lots of different masks here we can mess around with. We can click on holes. Now we get all these tiny little holes uh, that we're seeing through. And then we can go to our modifiers and, of course, change our noise scale. Jump this up to maybe something bigger like 300%. So we're going to get bigger, bigger holes. I guess we'll see less of them because they're bigger. But you see every once in a while we're just getting these little holes through it. Ding, 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 ding. Um, so that is what masks do for us. And I think those are all pretty straightforward. Um, but where things get interesting is our ability to actually interchange all of these. So how do we do that? I'm going to click on, let's say, lacquer. And let's go into our bumps. So in our bumps, I want to maybe, you see we got our layers here. I want to right-click and make that not a bump. I can right-click on it and make it a blur. So now you can see that instead of this being put into the bump channel it's put into the blur channel the roughness so i can go ahead and hit render here and now you can see you know and it's it is designed for bump so now you can see though that this is nice and rough on the outside and it gets shinier on these little pits so that means we can go to our modifiers and be like okay it's backwards so we can flip these around by pulling these sliders and now you can see that it's shiny all over except in those those pit areas so when I hit render, you see, oh, look, we got all these nice little rough, roughened out areas. And so that's a pretty neat look. It's nice little smudges all over the place. And then even that, we know these are uh, these are inverted. So I can say, OK, we don't want it ever to be maximum. So I can blur out everything. So it's a little bit blurry. And then we get these slightly more blurry areas. So that's that's neat by itself.
Uh, let's go with the lacquer again. And now let's look at maybe combining two of these. In fact, why don't we use layers again? It's a good example. Let's do layers one this time. So good. I'm going to do layers one. Let's even crank the bump depth and hit render on there. And let's see what we get. So now we're getting these really nice kind of layer, this layered effect where it feels like these are getting, let's zoom up a bit. See where it feels like we got this nice surface, but then it goes, it gets down, 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 down. Kind of like these little series of plateaus. Um, so why don't we go into our blur, I'm sorry, our bump, and then right click on that same layer two, and I'm going to add it to the blur channel as well. So by default, uh, it's kind of backwards where, well, backwards from what I want, where what's happening is it's very blurry. Oh, I clicked on the wrong one. Um, I, I wanted uh, layers one blur. So now you'll see that where the pits are, they're actually quite shiny. Look at it, it gets shinier as it goes deeper and it's very blurry on the outside. So that might, you know, if that's what you're aiming for, that's pretty cool. But I think in general, the deeper you dig into an object, like you have a polished stone, if you chip it, it's blurry underneath, not shiny. So now all you have to do is go to the modifiers again and invert those. And now, as these layers go down, we're going from maximum shininess to blur, 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 blurry as we go down. And of course, if we wanted to, we could clamp these. Uh, so if I start cranking up my high clamp to almost up at the top, then what I've said is I want to clamp that, that high blur as much as I can. So pretty much as soon as it starts going down into this pit a little bit, we get maximum blur. So combining these different layers is really kind of neat and fun. We can go back to lacquer. Let's go to blurs. And let's find a blur we like. What's a, what's a good example? We can go to even fingerprints. Let's do a crazier fingerprint. I'm going to click on fingerprints normal. So that's going to the fingerprints. Now I'm going to right click and also add it to our bump. So now it's also bumpy in the same place that the fingerprints are. It's almost like there's a layer of grease on top of it. So it actually pushes up or down a little bit. You'll see by default, it's actually pushing down. So now we have to go into our modifiers and invert our bump. And we probably want to be very subtle with it. So there we go. Now they're all pushing out a little bit. So now we've taken that blur and added it also to the bump. Now something important to note is when you're intermixing these, Make sure you add them to all, all the layers you want before you go to your noise scale. Because right now I could say, okay, that's cool, but I want the scale to be bigger so I can scale these up. But if I were to scale it up and then add in a blur, the blur will be at the smaller default scale. So just an important thing to throw out there. Uh, and now let's talk about the last one, which would be, of course, tinkering with our mask channel as well. And I just did this accidentally in another video. It looked really cool. But we can add in our cracks as a mask. But instead of doing that, why don't I right-click and add it to the blur channel? Uh, actually, let's just try blur. So I've added this mask into the blur, and look at that. This, all, you know, this just with one layer, it looks like because all these cracks are blurry, it looks like this is a piece of cracked glass. I could also right-click on it and also add it to the bump channel. So now it's in the bump and the blur. So now you can see it's actually, I think it's pushing down, but it might look like it's pushing up. Uh, it'll be harder to tell until we zoom up a little bit. Uh, so we can go over here and maybe invert our bump. Yeah, I think that's pushing it down a little bit more. And now it's blurry. So now when I render, we should get kind of this nice cracked glass effect where it looks like we've shattered the whole thing. And that's just by taking a mask. And I never never would have thought to make that a blur layer, but now it's combined in that really neat way. And it looks like this is like a piece of shattered glass. And it's all just noise based. And we were able to apply it really quickly. Um, so combining all of those and all those different ways gives you a lot more possibilities as far as, you know, just mixing and matching, just a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot of different combinations that I've just kind of found accidentally things that look neat where it, like, okay, let's go into Chrome and I'm going to go into masks and I'm going to steal my galvanize and I'm going to add it to my blur channel and my bump channel. Uh, and let's even, it's a little weird on the bump, but let's go ahead and maximize that a bit. And now this is just a chromed out material, but now every one of these little like patches becomes this own level of blur so we get this very different effect it might be a little bright right now at least in the angle it's catching um so we could pull down maybe on the reflection amount and look look at all these really neat like layered broken up bits of glass so, i mean it's a little bit like a shattered mirror i guess um but the different amounts of blur wouldn't necessarily be with a shattered mirror but it's just a, a neat looking combination it's really fun to just play around with throwing different layers in and mixing them and all of this is without us layering up multiple layers which we can totally do you know even you know and i guess it'd be important to note that i can do something like add a base layer and a lacquer 
So we just started that from, actually, let's add base, let's add lacquer. So it's a brand new material. I'm going to grab both of those, and I'm going to go into any channel. But let's go into bump, and let's grab something like dense. And now both of them have gotten dense. So there are dents in the base layer and dents in the lacquer layer. So you, you can add that to multiple layers at the same time. And it just stacks up really nicely. So I think that will cover it for bumps, blurs, and masks. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.